What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness across all social media platforms. This is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into the therapy, and also validate the victims, survivors, and thrivers, the thrivers of said disorder, said toxic people, said toxic traits. Today's episode is going to be about Narcissist and loneliness. How do narcissists feel when they are alone? Alone. Haha. <laughs> Before we happen to today's episode, y'all, make sure you join my newsletter, uh, email list. The link is in the description of every single video and podcast I do. You don't want to miss out on the things that I have coming up next. I have a lot of great stuff coming out next, y'all. You don't want to miss out on it. Um, but yeah. Hopping into today's episode, y'all. Narcissists, how do narcissists feel when they're alone? This right here could rattle you a little bit, y'all. So prep for it, just so you stay prepped. Um, a narcissist, in the mind of a narcissistic person, toxic person, whoever, when we are alone, it can drive us crazy. Um, when we are, I, I had a saying on my Facebook a long time ago. It said, uh, when I am alone with my thoughts, they become my enemies. It's like my thoughts attack me it's like it feels like the world is caving in on me it feels like the world is chasing me down it feels like i have so much stuff like whatever i'm thinking is coming in on me you know what i mean it's just like i don't have any per it's like even when i'm alone it's just like it's just y'all it's wildness it's like all the negative thoughts that i have bubble to the surface all of them i like if, if I have a thought, I think it. If it's negative, I think it. And if I tell people, like, a, nar a, a narcissist when they are alone can be a very uniquely dangerous person just based on everything, just based on how things go, just based on the way the world works and stuff like that. That narcissistic person can be extremely dangerous to you when they're alone. But when I'm alone, y'all, I'm just telling you, it feels, like I'm, it feels like everything is caving in on me. It feels like shame, regret, all these stuff that I've tried to repress down, it just bubbles to the surface. Like literally, it's just like, you know how, like just imagine like a, a peaceful, serene lake, right? If you close your eyes, you imagine in the lake. And in that lake, in the middle of the lake, you see these big, these big ass bubbles that start to come out of nowhere. That's how it feels, y'all. The shame, bubble. The regret bubble, the bad things that I've done bubble, the dark thoughts bubble, the failures in my life bubble. All this stuff is bubbling to the surface, y'all. So this what like you get a lot of narcissists who hate being by themselves. They just do, y'all. That's why you see narcissistic people cannot stand to be by themselves. They want to move on quickly. They need somebody else to be around. They need somebody else to have in their life. They need somebody else to be with them. They need it, need it, need it. It's not, it's not just a want, it's a need. It's like you cannot breathe without having somebody in your life. And it's hard, y'all. It's extremely tough to do. And I feel like when my wife left back in um, March or April of 2020, and I was alone. That was probably one of the toughest times I've had in my life, but it was necessary. It was necessary. Like me being able to be alone was necessary. I wanted like when she left, and I felt when I, when I when I came back home and she was gone, I immediately like, oh, I don't want to be by, be, by, be by myself here. I started about downloading dating apps. I was about to go out here and just clap all the cheat. Yeah, I was about to, I was about to get loose. I was about to get loose. But I told myself because I've been in therapy so long, I was able to slow myself down. I told myself, look, man, look, this is the this is a turning point in your life right now. This is a turning point in your life right now. You can either go out here, get loose and fail, or you can work on yourself, or you can you can deal with the silence, or you can learn to deal with the loneliness, or you can learn how to deal, how to push through this time. And I made a promise to myself. I, I challenged myself to be able to be alone. Most narcissists cannot do that. They will not do that. They can't stand it. If they're alone, they have if they, they can't sit alone in the silence and deal with themselves. So if they're alone, they drink. Because when they're alone, you drink, it helps bury it helps like, yeah, sometimes a certain level of taking a couple of shots or doing some kind of drug or something like that can help calm your mind down a little bit. A couple of shots clears you, it kind of lowers your inhibitions, it kind of clears your mind out, allows you to relax, right? 
allows you to relax. That's why you see a lot of narcissists that drink. They have addictive. They have addict. They get addicted to uh, illegal substances. They get addicted to the drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. You see, a, you see this happen a lot when you deal with narcissists. You see them get addicted to stuff a lot of times, y'all, because they're trying to drown out the noise. They're trying to stop the bubbles from bubbling to the surface. They go on these benders. They that's how you become. That's how some of them become alcoholics. It starts off as just a, a. It starts off just as an escape, but then it becomes something way bigger than that. Because you know, you're as the more you drink, the more your inhibition goes down. The more it takes for you to get drunk. It's just how yeah. This this part of it. It's part of the dynamic. It's part of it right there. The more you drink, the harder it is. And like I said, it goes through. You go through that cycle right there. You just go through this cycle. It's cyc- it's cyclical. It's a, it, and the cycle doesn't stop until somebody stops it. You know, it doesn't stop until somebody stops it. So a, a lonely narcissist can be a very dangerous narcissist, y'all, because they start to drink and do all this stuff like this right here, y'all. And I know what people are going to say, well, Lee, narcissists end up alone. A lot of nar- most narcissists end up alone at the end of their lives. No, they don't. No, most narcissists don't end up being alone at the end of their lives. They end up, a lot of narcissists are married for long periods of time, have family and friends that they that end up with them at the near the end of their life, right? Near, when their life is coming to an end, they have family and friends around them consistently, right? Because not everybody knows about narcissism. Nobody knows, not everybody knows about narcissistic abuse or emotional abuse or toxic abuse, psychological abuse. Not everybody knows what's going on behind the scenes. Some people think y'all are, you, you are happy. You've been together for a long time. So not, not, not all narcissists end up alone at the end. But they end up internally lonely. So no matter what you do, y'all, even if you have a person in your life, even if you have a person that you love in your life, you still feel emptiness. You still feel alone. You just do, y'all. Loneliness, loneliness is a killer of narcissists, y'all. It just does. When you become alone with your thoughts, when you get alone, when you are alone with your thoughts, they absolutely become your enemies. They just do. That's one of the that's part of the dynamic. They become your enemies. Your thoughts start to attack you. And then what can you what else can you do? When your own thoughts start to attack you. There's nothing you can really do about that in that space. So you get a lot of you get some narcissists who end up, you know, in, in, ending their ending their existence, taking them taking themselves out of here, you know, because they can't deal with it. They can't deal with the loneliness. They can't deal with the shame because they, they end up taking themselves out of here. And this is no way. This is, this is no way. In no way, shape, or form, me telling you, if you have a narcissist in your life that you left and they are alone by themselves, don't go back to them because if they, if they have those unaliving unaliving themselves thoughts. They're going to take you with them. Don't sacrifice yourself. Don't do that. You see what I'm saying? You know, okay, don't, don't do that right there. It just, you know, don't do that. It's just in that space right there. Just in that dynamic. You know, that's how the mind works, y'all. Don't sacrifice yourself for a narcissistic person. You can't call it. Like, if they say, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't want to be here anymore. Call the hotline, call the police, do a wellness check. Do that right there. Protect yourself. You can have empathy and not let your empathy be weaponized against you, y'all. You can, you know. Don't let your empathy be weaponized against you because a lot of narcissists, like I said, they might not be alone at the end of their life, but they'll be internally lonely. Physically, they might not be alone, but internally, they might be lonely. You see what I'm saying? Physically alone, internally lonely. You see what I'm saying? Just in this bad space right there. You know, it just it is how it goes, y'all. I just feel like a lot of times in these toxic narcissistic relationships, that's how it goes. Like, if you're dealing with a lonely narcissist, there's nothing you can do, y'all. Like your presence, sometimes they take your presence just for granted. They're going to do that. They they always think you're going to be there. They think you're going to be there with them through the through the good times and the bad times. The bad times, which which they cause a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of times they cause the bad times. You know. The good time to through the thick and thin. They causing all the thin times, y'all. They thinning out your relationship. You see what I'm saying? They thinning it out. Why, 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 why your relationship thin? They are thinning it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They are thinning the relationship out. They want to say you have to find some peace in your life. You have to be able to find that peace, that space, that great. Give yourself that space and that grace in these situations in the dynamics, y'all. Because as a narcissist myself, yeah, I, I'm married, I have my children, y'all, and I've been working on myself, so it allows me to just enjoy people's company and not need to try to suppress my thoughts and feelings so I don't feel alone. But I still feel it sometimes, you know? It still comes, hey, the, lonely, the loneliness hits you in waves. You know, it hits you in waves. It's like you're standing on the beach with your feet on the uh, on the shore. Your feet, is on the, your feet are right there at the, at the tide line, right? You know, low tide comes in, then high tide. Your feet are getting deeper and deeper into the water. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get hit by a big ass wave. The waves hit you, y'all. The wave, the the waves of loneliness are going to hit you over and over again. Even even if you are surrounded by people, 
you feel alone. And that's what I tell people, y'all. It's just in my mind, in my heart. Like, it, it, part of my story, it says, like, um, I used to be in a room full of people, and I still feel like I was by myself. Is it sometimes, y'all, without that emotional connection, you're always going to feel like you're alone. Even if you have people with you physically, without that emotional connection, you still be lonely. And it, sometimes the loneliness can come from depression, paranoia, whatever it is, y'all. It just you're still gonna feel lonely. You have to deal with that, y'all. They have they have to be willing to deal with that stuff. They have to be willing to work through their own issues. They have to be willing to fight through it. Because if they don't, then you have to buckle up and then you have to deal with it. And then you have to you're gonna be the recipient of pain and suffering. And you don't deserve that. But at the end of the day, y'all, you have to make the choice for yourself. Thank y'all for tuning in, y'all. If you haven't already, y'all look. Next Thursday, uh, what's next Thursday? The 31st, next Thursday the 31st? Uh, yeah, next Thursday, the 31st, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm starting a live show called Waving the, Waving the Red Flag on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. So if you don't follow me on YouTube already, follow me on YouTube, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and whatnot as well, Mental Healers Across All Spaces, and it's a live show where people are going to come on and tell their stories and whatnot. It's called Waving the Red Flag. We'll come up with a topic idea, y'all, and the email to send it in. Just stay safe, stay empowered, like and subscribe. You don't want to miss the live show. Mental Healers is out. Peace. What is going on, beautiful people? Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video, watching it all the way through, y'all. If you haven't already, go ahead, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, y'all. Turn on notifications so you don't miss a video and whatnot, and so we can help reach more people. Like I said in the beginning, the self-love brand is available. Um, I have a self-love journal that's available on Amazon as well to help you rebuild that self-love. Lee Hammock, I love me on um, Amazon and whatnot. I also do one-on-ones over Zoom and such as well, y'all. Like and subscribe for more.